so we're on our way to Cape Canaveral to watch the Osiris Rex launch, which is happening in a couple of days. This is going to be my chance to see my first rocket launch, which is pretty exciting because I've been reporting on rocket launches for 17 years now, so I think I should be able to. This is the Osiris Rex mission. This is going to be the one that's going to be retrieving a chunk of rock from an asteroid, bringing the sample back to Earth so that uh, scientists can study it and, and see what it's made out of. So we're just leaving beloved Vancouver Island now, and uh, it's nighttime. We've got about an eight hour wait until we catch our flight. So we've got to go uh, to the Vancouver airport, and then we're going to go on the, uh, the 6.30 a.m. flight. We're running out of time to get to see this rocket. I'd be amazed if we make it. We are driving out to the Kennedy Space Center, which is uh, located at Cape Canaveral on this really cool island. And we've left really early because we're gonna try and see the rollout of the rocket. So they're gonna take the, the big Atlas V rocket carrying the OSIRIS-REx mission and take it out to the pad. Before we can actually, actually get out to the press area where we can start setting up our gear and conducting interviews, we have to get badged. Look at you with your pretty pink badge. <laughs> this one lets me on to NASA, and this one gives me accreditation to watch the OSIRIS-REx launch. But unfortunately, we, uh, because we're Canadian, we're not allowed to actually drive ourselves to the press office. We have to catch a shuttle bus from the press office. So they're, they're coming back to pick us up personally and take us out to the press office because because that's how important we are. Well, we made the bus. Thought we weren't gonna make it, but we actually made it on time. So we're gonna go to see the rollout of the Alice 5 rocket that's carrying the Cyrus Rex. So in there is the Atlas V rocket that's going to be carrying OSIRIS-REx. So that's the gantry, that's where they assemble the rocket, that's where they mate the top of the payload to the top of the rocket, and then once it's been, uh, it's been mated, then they drive it over on train tracks along here, and it's going to be moving over to the launch pad over there. And that's why we're here. We're just going to watch it move from there to there. So now we're actually going to go up and see the rocket there. So there's the uh, the Atlas V with the Osiris Rex at the top. I didn't know we were going to get this close. This is really cool. I'm really excited. It sounds like a jet engine from here. That's where the SpaceX rocket exploded earlier this week. And you can actually see the damage to the gantry. So that was a bonus while we were here. That's the space shuttle's um, fuel tank yeah. and, uh, and solid booster, yeah. So we're at the Kennedy Space Center. We got about four hours to kill before the launch of the Atlas V rocket with the OSIRIS-REx mission. So we're just gonna be tourists, check out the Space Shuttle Atlantis, maybe do a tour of the Kennedy Space Center. I'm really excited. 
It's too hot. It's too hot. It's kind of hard to just comprehend the scale of this thing. It's the Saturn V rocket. It's, it's just, it's a monster. I hope we'll rock, launch, launch rockets. I hope someday we will launch rockets again with this kind of capacity. To the moon and back. Feels like every breath that I take is like it's on fire. And the only thing that's not catching it on fire is the moisture in the air. I, who lives like this? I love the, I love the audio here. There's like a background audio going everywhere you go. It's like inspiring space music. It's like you're in a movie. Anyway, now I'm walking in the steps of the Apollo 11 astronauts. This is the gangplank that they took to actually get onto their capsule. This is so cool. Next stop, the moon. You're a little, you're a little off kilter there, Chad. You can, you can fix it in post. This is the capsule that the Apollo 11 astronauts were inside. Not a lot of space in there. That's the original countdown clock that's actually down at the press area where we get to go and, and uh, hang out while we're waiting for the rocket to launch. So they've moved it here to the Kennedy Space Center and they got a new fancy big LCD screen, but I like the original one better. Asteroid Bennu is a relic of the solar system. Whenever you see dark gunk in the solar system, that means organics. And so that tells us something about the chemistry of the early solar system. And this asteroid is a pristine sample of that stuff. This asteroid has actually a pretty similar orbit to Earth's in terms of the length of its year, but it's on a, a much wider, uh, more elongated elliptical orbit. And so it only comes close to close relatively close to us yeah, about once every six years. So to make everything match, what, what OSIRIS-REx has to do is orbit the sun to adjust its trajectory and match orbit with Bennu so they can fall into orbit around the asteroid. So the total mission is about seven years for that reason. It takes that long to get into orbit, find a spot to sample, zoom in close enough within 30 feet, extend that arm, snorkel up material from the surface. Pick it up and bring it back to Earth so we can then measure the actual geology and geophysics of this sample that we've looked at with a camera and then in the lab. And now we can get what's called ground truth of what we see and what we measure. Since 1999, we have been able to measure how much the orbit has changed. Of, of Bennu. It is not following the same orbit today as it was in right. 1999 because of this Yarkovsky effect. The surface of, of Bennu is very dark, which means that when sunlight falls on it, absorbs most of that light, but it's going to be re-radiated back out into space in essentially all sorts of crazy directions. It will change the rotation of, of the asteroid, but it'll also change its orbit. The orbit could change enough that it could cross ours. Right. We want to know how this effect works, and to do that, we want to study the surface of the asteroid very carefully. Yeah. Well, we're here. So we we're get, here. We get to watch our watch a rocket launch now. Yes. All time right. for showtime. <laughs> so we're here on the NASA Causeway, across this body of water, to the rocket, which is over there, and it's going to be lifting off in a, I don't know, like an hour or so. So, the actual rocket. This is the rocket here. And then the actual vehicle in the vehicle integration facility where they actually stack up the rocket is there. And so yesterday when we caught that time lapse, the rocket was going from the VIF to the launch pad. And so now we should be able to watch a launch. And we've got 90% weather. It's beautiful. It's just gorgeous here. The wind's coming in, but it's not too strong. Not a lot of clouds. This is gonna be perfect. What's gonna happen in the last 
couple of uh, seconds of this? What are we going to see? Well, in the last couple of seconds, thankfully there are speakers here out at the causeway, so you'll be able to hear it. Yeah. Uh, you will hear the countdown? Yes, yeah, so you yeah. can hear the countdown. Yeah. There'll be a bit of a smoke plume, then you, all you hear is camera clicks nonstop from all of us people <laughs> yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy the sound people. sound delay, right? The interesting thing is, if you can look at the water, look for the fish jumping out of the water. Really? You can sometimes see fish jumping out of the water because of the rumble of the sound. Yeah. The craziest thing is, you will see it go up, you will not hear a thing. Yeah. It takes about 15 or 20 seconds because the speed of sound right. to start hearing everything. You'll hear the engines fire up, yeah. then you'll hear the ignition by the time it's already you know, yeah. up in the air. And that's when it hits you. And not only do you see it, but because there's the solid rocket boosters, you feel it. Wow. Oh, man. I'm, I keep saying this. I am so excited to, uh, for this to happen. 10 seconds, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Two, one, and liftoff of Osiris Rex. Whoa, what's happening? So, well, that, that's all that's left, this cloud from the uh, rocket. Uh, that, was, that was crazy. That was one of the most amazing experiences of my whole entire life. I have never seen anything like that. And if you ever get a chance to watch a rocket launch, not even just from here, but like from anywhere on the Space Coast, you should do it. You should come out here and you should get a chance to appreciate this. Uh, bucket list checked off. So I hope you got a chance to sort of experience what it was like to join us on this, on this launch. And uh, good luck to Osiris Rex uh, meeting up with the asteroid now.